Hey everyone, my name is Riley and this video is a complete beginner's guide to MailChimp automations. I will show you how the entire MailChimp automation works, including how to use and navigate this mind map feature, what all of these individual tools mean, and also some tips and tricks that you can use to make sure that your charts never get cluttered. Now, right here, I am on the MailChimp dashboard and to create an automation sequence with MailChimp, we go over to this panel on the left hand side and click right here into automations. Once we are on the automation screen, you can see all of the different journeys and pre-built automations that MailChimp builds for us. So we can see any of these right here. We have a welcome sequence, find new contacts with Facebook lead ads, recover lost customers. And what I will say about these is they look awesome at first glance. However, when we actually click in and we take a look at these, these are actually not very good at all. We can see welcome new contacts. All this is going to do is send them a simple email. That's it. So the way that I prefer to do this is I never use any of these templates and instead I build a journey from scratch. So to do this, we just click on build from scratch in this top right corner. And we now want to create a name for this automation. So I'm going to call this right here, welcome sequence. This is the first sequence that people are going to get added to as soon as they sign up to my email list. So we can click on start building. And in here, this is now where we can start building the journey. So we first of all need to choose a starting point. So a contact is added when we can click here and choose from any of these options. So we can choose when a tag is added, when they sign up to the email list, when they have a birthday or when an email is sent. Now, as this is the first automation that we are creating, we of course want to go for signs up for email. So we can select that right there and we can see that when a contact signs up to my email list, they are added to this email sequence. Now, the first thing that we need to do is actually go ahead and send them an email. So for the first journey point, we can click in and then we can see all of the things that we can do over here. So we have actions where we can send them an email, we can send an SMS, we can send a server. So let's choose from one of these. I'm going to start out by sending an email. So let's click on this. And now I need to create the email that I'm going to send out. So over on this panel, we can choose the subject. So we can click in here and we can now create a subject and preview text. So for the subject, let's say I am creating a welcome sequence for my YouTube channel when people subscribe to my list. So I'm going to say welcome to GeForce North. Then the preview text, I will say the best YouTube channel in the world. By the way, if you haven't subscribed, go down and do that right now. I would be very much appreciative of that. But we can save that and we now have the subject and preview text. The next thing that we are going to do is actually go in and start creating this email. So we can click on select a template right here choose from any of these templates and then we can go through and actually start creating and crafting our own email. If you do not know how to create an email on MailChimp, then I will leave a link in the description of this video to a video that I created showing you exactly how to create one of these emails. But for now, all I'm going to do is just click apply and then just use one of these templates as the email that I'm going to send out because this video is specifically about how to create automations and not about emails. So that is now added in and this is the journey that we have so far. So somebody signs up, they are instantly sent an email and then we can add the next journey point. Now, I don't want to send an email immediately because as soon as they join, I don't want them getting two emails at the same time. So the next thing that we are going to do is go to rules and add a time delay. So we can add a time delay right here and then choose how long this time delay is going to be for. So let's say 24 hours, save. And we can see this is now a one day delay. Then we can add another journey point right here. Let's send another email. Then we can go through, create this email once again. I will just use this template. And that is the very basics of how we can create a sequence. So basically we would just go through and continue to do the same thing. We can add a time delay, set this to 24 hours or however long you want it to be. Then we add another email and this is how you create a very basic automation sequence. But what about if we want to take this to the next level? And this is where we can use some of the other functions on this right hand side, like these rules, tagging people, uns unsubscribing people and all of that good stuff. So let's start out with an if else rule. 
let's add this to the sequence right here and figure out what this does. So we currently have the if else condition on our sequence and we can click in to choose what the condition is. So we can see basically the way that this works is if the person on our email list fits this criteria, they go yes and they go down this path. And if they don't, then they go no and they go down this path. So we can basically split our audience depending on their actions. So let's click in and see what we can sort by here. So we can add a filter and these ones, the contact details, I don't really like too much, but down here, these are a lot better. So email, SMS and automations activity. So we can basically say the email interaction right here. This is one of my favorites to do. And I basically use this to split people into active and inactive. So I will just show you my method of doing this. We go email interaction and then we can choose what they did with this email interaction. So we can have opened, clicked, was sent, did not open, did not click, or was not sent. So we can go opened. And then let's say any of the last five campaigns. So we can then use the segment right here. And we can now see this if else condition is, did this person open any of the last five campaigns? If this was yes, if they opened any of the last five campaigns, they go here. If no, then they didn't. Then what I also like to do is go to journey point and we can add a tag here. So we can add a tag on this side. And then we can say if they did open any of the last five campaigns, well, they're going to be tagged as active. We can then create this new tag and add them to active, then save. So we add tag active. If not, then let's create another tag on this side and say if they didn't open any of these last five campaigns, they're going to be tagged as inactive. So we can tag that right there, add that and perfect. We now have a tag for both active and inactive. Then what we could maybe do is carry on the email sequence if they go down this path. But if they are inactive, then maybe we can send another two or three emails saying, hey, you haven't opened any of my last emails. Are you still active? Then we can go here. Let me just show you how this looks. So we could go send email once again and create an email right here. And let's imagine that this email that I am creating on this side says, hey, you didn't open any of my last emails. Are you still active? So what we could then do on this side is once again, we could add a journey point, go for if else. And we now want to figure out, did they open this last email? So once again, we will go down here to email interaction and say, did they open this? And did they open this last campaign? We can then use this segment right here. And then we can say, cool, if they did open this campaign, then we are going to go in here and we are going to tag and untag. And we are going to go inactive and untag them from this. So cool. If they open that email, they are now removed from inactive. And let's also go and add them to active as well. So we go in here, active, and add them to this. Perfect. And then if they didn't open this email, it's pretty apparent at this point that they are completely inactive. So we can just go down and we can say, we want to unsubscribe this person from our email list. They are clearly inactive. They clearly don't care. So let's just unsubscribe them completely. So hopefully you should now start to have a better idea of really how we can map out and how we can create these automations. So now let's take a look at percentage split. Now, this is what you can use if you want to split test campaigns. So let's just go on this side with anybody tags active and add a percentage split. We can then choose the percentage split. So maybe you have an email that is already working and you want to test out a new one. Then we can send this email to 70% of the people. And the one that we are testing out, we can send to 30. So let's send that right there. Then we can see the split on either side right here. So now what we can do is we can go add journey point and send an email. And then we can send the email that we are confident is going to work and has very good stats. We can send this to 70%. Then we can send a different email to the 30%. And this is the email that we that is new, that we are a little bit unsure of. And we can use this to see if this is really going to work. From here, we can do a few other things. So as well as sending emails, you can set up SMS messages. So we can go in here, apply to SMS messaging and set all of that up. And then we can send out texts as well if we have the customer's email. Let's uh, delete this for now. We can also create groups. So a common question is, what's the difference between tags and groups? Basically, groups are more set to people. For example, if you were collecting people's where they live, like London, then you could group them together in people that live in London. So it is handy for when you are actually collecting emails. 
But when creating an automation campaign like this, I don't recommend using groups and ungroup. Then unsubscribe we've already covered, and once again update contact and archive contact. This is basically what you can use, so you can set up automations to basically update a contact's information if they, sit, if they hit certain criteria, and the same for archive. But I wouldn't really recommend using either of these, I would just stick to the ones that we have covered. The main things that you really want to be using inside of this customer journey when you are creating this is if else, percentage split, time delay, send email, send SMS. You can also use survey. So if we go into the survey option right here, we can basically create a survey within an email. Pretty straightforward right there. So that is worth using as well. And then apart from that, tag and untag and subscribe are the only other things that I would use. Now, the final thing that I will show you is as you can imagine, as this starts to grow, this can start to look very, very confusing. Like you can have a huge map right here that has a lot of different parts and all of these different things spiraling out. And that can get very, very confusing. So what I often do when I am creating automations is I would go for this. So let's just delete all of these. And I will sometimes leave automations with the last section as add tag. And I will show you why. So let's just go ahead and delete all of these real quick. So if we really want to remove clutter from these charts, then we can create this right here and then we can leave the final section as tags. So we can see right now, this is how this sequence is going to look. Somebody signs up, they get email one, a one day delay, email two, and then depending on if they opened these emails, they get added to the tag as active or inactive. So we could just go up and continue and save this as it is. And then we could back out and create new journeys for each of these. So what I mean by this is we could once again go build from scratch. Then let's call this one right here active because these are all of the people that were added to the active tab. We can start building this right here. And then for the trigger, instead of having this as when somebody signed up for the email, we can go when somebody is added as a tag, then they are added into here. So we select this as active and then we can now build out an entirely new customer journey for people who are just tagged as active. So what this would look like is if I show you between these two campaigns, is somebody would get added to the welcome sequence, they would go through this. And then as soon as they are added to the active tab, this automation right here stops. And then they are added into this new automation right here, this active automation that you can fill out for people specifically with the active tab. So you can do that. You can basically do this as many times as you like. And this is really just going to stop your charts and your mind maps from getting cluttered. And this is a really cool tip that I picked up. So I just thought I would share it with you. So that is how you can use the MailChimp automations. If you found this video valuable, don't forget to smash that like button and tap that subscribe button. And until next time, take it easy.